Okay, there we go. Okay, recording. Today we're going to be looking at chapter three. Get that over here. And maybe chapter four, because next week, of course, we're going to be wrapping up. So today in chapter three, we're going to go over the opening. Now, I've seen some of your presentations now. We've had three presentations up to now. And it seems like one of the areas that we can focus on is the opening. How do we approach the opening of a presentation? So let's go ahead and look at some ideas about the opening. In the opening, of course, uh, we're going to talk about the objectives, how to make a good impression. We're going to talk about how to send signals. Now, this is a key point, how to send signals because the signals are kind of like the map. We're going to talk about the main point. I think everybody's beginning to understand the main point. We're going to talk about uh, how to present links. There's this little typo there. And we're going to talk about the dress code, and we're going to use some examples from your presentations, first impressions, and we're going to talk about how to be professional. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin talking about these signals. From the beginning of your presentation, you're going to have to give some signals. So in our presentations, um, we saw the, the Starbucks presentation, like um, a Paul was wearing the lab coat, right? Yeah. Right? So that's one way to give a kind of impression Right? That's a way to give an impression, to let the audience see something. Um, that was good for that, except your thing wasn't real. That's what frustrates me so much. <laughs> so I can't really give you credit for not being real. If every group could just make up something, they'd make up something very interesting too, but we're not free to do that. Okay, so we're talking about uh, making a good impression. Actually, Lots of the groups, when you first begin, you're, before, before I say begin, well, I say begin when you're ready, but before you begin, actually some of you make a good impression, but then when you begin, you become so uh, stiff, so formal, so you just repeat what you memorize, your first impression kind of goes away, which is kind of, kind of too bad. You need to be a little bit more relaxed. So how do we do this? We send positive signals. Now how do you send positive signals? You need to pretend that you're talking to a small group. Now here it's not too hard because there's just you and the video camera, right? So it's kind of easy. But when you give a real presentation, it's not that easy. When you give a real presentation, there may be you and many people, or a few people, but there may be many people. So in that case, the presentation is not that easy. You need to pretend, you need to think in your mind. I'm just talking to a few people. I'm just talking to my friends. You need to sound interested in what you're saying, and I think this is one thing that's difficult for you. You need to sound like you are excited about the topic you're talking about, right? You're interested. If you're interested, then I think the audience will be more interested. You need to show that you're involved, that you're part of it. This is one reason that I kind of liked Paul's approach. Paul made it look like he's interested. But how do you do that with a real coffee product that's not this X coffee thing? I don't know. It's not so easy. And you need to, of course, use your body language to make the audience feel you're interested and you're excited. Your eye contact is actually quite good. I think it's not too hard here because it's just one camera. Right? When you have a real audience, there's many people. And you cannot just look at one place. You need to look at everyone inside in the audience. You need to be looking around, making eye kind of contact with everyone. That's a little bit harder. Here, though, you do a good job. You need to keep your sentences short, which I think you've done better and better. Every presentation, you get better and better at keeping your sentences short, making your points very clear. You can tell a joke. You can acknowledge the audience. You can say things like, I saw you came here because, I heard about you, I heard about your company, I heard about your 
organization, I heard about your school, you can say things like that, and that helps people relax. So let's begin talking about some uh, negative signals. Here are some negative signals. When you act uh, shy, that's a very negative signal. What, how, do, how do you act shy? You're kind of not confident, you don't face the audience clearly, you're a little bit nervous. Avoid looking at your watch and your notes, but you can use notes, it's okay, but you should have them on little note cards like that. It seems like in our presentation nobody has any notes. Why does no one have any notes? Nobody's using notes. Why does no one have any notes? Any idea why no one has any notes? Alice? Why does no one have any notes? You didn't use any notes, did you? Yeah. Did you have notes? I didn't see no. you have notes. Why not? You memorized it. You memorized it. Okay. One reason I think lots of our presenters don't have notes is because you memorize everything. That's okay, but the problem when you memorize is if you forget, <laughs> then you're totally lost right? So I actually think it's a good idea to have a note paper, short, small, and you can keep it. And if you don't use it, it's okay, but if you get confused, you can look at the note paper. It's quite okay. It also looks very professional. There's nothing wrong with it. Nobody thinks, it's a, nobody thinks that's a bad thing. People do it all the time. So I think you don't want to look at your notes all the time, though. You don't want to read them all the time. You can use them as backup. Okay? Try not to look bored. I don't think anyone here looked too bored. You guys are pretty good about not looking bored. Okay, let's go on to some more here. Start out with a topic. So, this is what we call topic sentence. Now, we talked about topic sentence before when we were talking about writing your thesis, remember? Topic sentence at the beginning. Every paragraph needs a topic sentence. Every section needs a topic sentence. I think here you can still do some improvement. At the beginning of your presentation, a very clear topic sentence would be helpful. We're going to look at the examples later in the second part of our class. Some groups had good topic sentences, some did not, but lots of people kind of go over a little bit too fast, it's not very clear. A person in the audience should hear your topic sentence and right away they have a clear feeling. Hey, this is something interesting. This is something I want to watch. This is something I want to spend my time on. This is something I want to do. So that's what a topic sentence does. A topic sentence lets us see. I'm interested. I want to spend my time. So I think, for example, Paul and uh, his lab coat and everything, that was interesting, but the topic sentence wasn't super clear at the very beginning. You know, what, what is that? What is that? Right? I don't think anybody said, besides Amazon, I think you kind of said it, but nobody really said at the beginning, I'm going to show you the new product that's going to make X dollars of money. You see, that maybe would have been good. Or, I think for Netflix, you guys began by saying, we're going to make it easy for you to watch the video wherever you want to. And then you talked about the apps, yes. right? So that was interesting. For Sans, it was a little bit confusing. But it's hard. Your topic is hard. Because it's the whole company, and you're talking about one show. So how do you begin by letting people know this is our huge com Amazon too. This is a huge company. I'm going to tell you about one little tiny thing. That is not an easy thing to do. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's hard. But you need to do that to get people right away interested, right? So I think in your case you began by saying you began with the C CSI thing. You said you can solve a mystery, you can solve a murder, right? And for Amazon you said how can you, how can you 
write the stories for the books you're interested in. You showed the books, right? That was the fan fiction thing. I didn't even know they have that. Oh, they just launched it two days ago. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, okay, very good. All right, so um, we can all work on this always, getting the topic a little bit more clear to let us know what it is. Okay? And although an audience may have many people, each person, each person wants to feel you're talking to me. So you need to make that exciting feeling, right? This is exciting. This is really interesting. I want to show you, and everybody feels it's me. The you is me, you see? That's how we do that. Let's look at some example topic sentences here. For example, today I will introduce the past and present of an exciting company, 3M, right? Very clear, very short. Tourism is an important aspect of Thailand's economy that has changed over the last decade in order to take advantage of modern marketing techniques. This is obviously a research topic. So tourism in Thailand, history, modern marketing technique. So I'm showing the researchers. Now, this audience and this audience are a different audience. So this one will not work for that one, and that one will not work for this one, right? Our group proposes to overcome financial problems by developing a new channel directly to consumers that will ease purchasing while improving two-way communication. So here, this is the problem, this is the solution. That's, I'm telling you right now what I'm going to do today. I'm going to tell you, here's the problem, here's the solution. This quarter has shown our highest profits in 10 years. Very, very clear. This is what I'm going to tell you today. Actually, I could stop right here. I could stop my presentation, and you already know the main point. That's a good main point. If I just stop the presentation and you know the main point, that's a good, that's a good topic sentence. Okay. This afternoon, I will explain to you the new opportunities in the China market for our franchise operations. So... This is another, this is a business topic. This is inside our company, to people inside our company. This is our target market. This is what we're going to do, franchise operations. Okay, very, very clear. Let's talk about some positive uh, signals. For example, these are things you need to work on. Now, I think I really suggest this week, you use your book and you, you study some of these phrases. Because the one thing everyone is weak on are these phrases, these, these words you drop in. I think what you've done is lots of times you memorize things. You memorize the words, but you don't have the phrases, the introductory, transitional, concluding phrases. So let's look at some of these phrases here. For example, you could say, I'm happy to do something. I'm honored to do something. These are normal English phrases that everyone, when they hear it, they understand what you're saying. It's like a, like a program. Boink, they understand. I'm honored to have this opportunity to talk to you today. I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk to you today. That's a good, a good uh, approach, a good phrase. It is a great opportunity to be here and... It is a great opportunity to be here today and speak about Netflix. Okay? Now, s almost all of our groups, you don't do this. And the reason you don't do this is because you're not a native speaker. I think uh, Amazon is the best example, but that's because your English practice is so much more. So these are the way you just, boom, you, you say it and people right away understand because it's very commonly used. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't think anybody was doing this. I didn't use Maria. I Did you say good morning? Yes, I remember you said it's a true honor to be here today. <laughs> it's a little bit, it's a little bit, a little bit uh, interesting. Good. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ladies and gentlemen, something, something. Okay, do something. All right. Welcome to my presentation. I'm glad to see you at my presentation. Thank you for your interest in my presentation. OK? 
Okay? You can actually use these together. They're totally normal and acceptable. And then my name is. Now, almost everybody is good at this. Everyone does this pretty good. Right? You're not bad at this. My name is Mr. Smith, Paul Smith, and I've been asked to talk about, I've been asked to present to you, I've been asked to lecture you about something. Before I begin, I would like to, now this is an interesting one, and I think this is something you could use to help you relax a little bit. Before I begin, thank you for this opportunity. Before I begin, uh, to recognize, I want to recognize the efforts of, before I begin, I would like to thank you for, I would like to thank my company for something, something. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that if you have any questions, something, something, something. But before we begin, I want to remind you just to be patient. We're going to have lunch in 10 minutes. If you can wait 10 minutes, then you can have lunch. I know you're hungry. So this helps you at the beginning to say something to help everyone uh, relax, change the topic. Remember last week I was talking about change the topic a little bit, change the direction a little bit, makes people feel less nervous, especially you feel less nervous. Okay, the topic today is, the aim is, the main point of this presentation is, the main topic of my presentation is, the reason I am here today is to the reason I am here today is to review our work, describe the results, is to introduce. The purpose of this presentation is to review our work on, describe the results, introduce. The purpose is and then here you can in your book you can write some of your own topics there. Okay, uh, we talked about outline before. I'm not going to go over outline. Actually, everyone's outline is, is not bad. I really like your slide design lately. I find that if I quickly look at some slides over here, let me see. Do I have your presentation slides? I think I do, yes. So if we quickly look at some presentation slides before we take a break here, I want to go over some core points. So let's look at um, SANS first. Okay. Now, for the SANS slide, maybe for the SANS slide, you can, the SANS group can quickly give us an introduction. What was your idea for the beginning of your presentation? What was your, what were you thinking? What was your, what, what, what were you trying to do at the beginning of your presentation? You know what I mean? What, yeah. No, uh, we pretend that the audience like, uh, knows uh, they are in sense and we have to present a, present that we have an exhibition in for CSI. Yeah, and this, and the topic, and the name for the exhibition is the CSI experience. Right, now this is, this is one exhibit or one show. Uh, one entertainment. Uh, when you came in, uh, it's an exhibition and you can react. You can, mm. you can participate part in it. Yeah. Okay. So at the beginning, you're using the logo from the show and the company logo to try to draw people in to be interested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's pretty clear idea. Not bad. Okay, and then your next slide was lead you to be an investigator because this is what you do in the show, right? Yeah. You do this, you do this, you do this, right? Oh. And we got the CI, CSI logo up there. And I like that. I like that. It's pretty clear. I think, uh, could you not get any pictures of the show? You didn't have any pictures of the show, did you? Uh, from the exhibit, from the, from the game? Uh, because the uh, we can yeah. take photos in the game. Right, so exactly, can, right, so. right. That's a little bit harder, right. Okay, okay, I understand. Okay, let's take a look then over at Netflix quickly. And for Netflix slides, we begin here with a nice big picture of the company's uh, logo, and then how to serve entertainment to your hand. Or, um, I guess a better way to say this might be Mm. Entertainment in your hands. Yeah, it's shorter. 
So I really like Netflix because this group's approach was very clear and the point is very obvious. Netflix to your uh, mobile device, right? Netflix to your mobile device. And the very first slide after, after the introduction is the Netflix in your, in your hand. So you see, very nice and clean outline, very straightforward. I really like the Netflix design, very good. It's not, it's not super colorful, it's not super colorful. The sands is much more color coordinated, but that's okay because the point is really, really clear. And that's what I like the most about it. I'm not crazy about doing too much on that, okay? So let's take a look at um, Netflix CSI, and this is, is this the Starbucks one? New? Right? Okay, if we take a look at the Starbucks one here, okay, so do you want to explain, Eric, or what's your idea here? Because last week and uh, before we have a presentation, we talk about some that we we talk about in the class. Uh, teacher, you say not just to present how good it is. Not just how good it is. Mm -hmm. The product. Uh, we have to tell our customers uh, the benefits. And because if we talk about, uh, we, we talk much. My, uh, too much the benefit or the functional benefit, uh, the, the, the customer can can feel this. Uh, just because we, if we just talk... But how does this make you feel this? Product. I mean, tell me, what, what is this, what's the idea here? What are you trying to do? Oh, try, we, to do, uh, we just want to introduce a new, just new. new right. Yeah. So... So you can see a little bit of the, of the confusion because at the beginning, I mean, compare this to Netflix. Let's look at the Netflix comparison. If you look at Netflix, it's in your hand, right? The first slide is in your hand. Let's look at your second slide here. So after we see the first slide, we see what's next. We see, we see this, okay. So any idea here? Killer product experience of people and this thing here. <laughs> You see, so I understand you're going to tell me something new. And I understand here I don't really understand anything. So you're not really helping me see the subject. You see? So uh, I think we really need it up front to see what is it we're talking about. Now later in your presentation you emphasize health, health, health. health you emphasize, uh, well, you emphasize some strange things like beauty, appearance. It's kind of all health. So the problem is this does not really tell me anything about health or appearance. You see what I'm saying? So I think you've missed the target on the main, the main point, the main, the main idea. I think you've kind of missed it. I think it would have been much better at the very beginning right here to tell me what is your point? Health. Uh, new coffee that improves your health. Right here, tell me. Right here. Okay? That would have been more main point. Okay? All right, now what's left over here? We've got uh, Apple here, right? Okay. If we look at Apple's slide then, over here on Apple's, we begin with this slide here. New product development, Nike plus iPad. Okay, so Apple Group, do you want to explain to me what was the idea here? We just, put, we just put all the things you need in your uh, in exercise um, you need. Mm -hmm. If you use our product, you just need the shoes and your um, tech technology devices like iPhone or iPad and the 
the sensor. Yes. Just you you just need three things. Okay. And you can draw your sport up. Okay. So here, if this is the main point, we're seeing the products here. So this slide is very much like the Netflix slide, right? This is the company. These are the logos. What's the next slide? Let me see if I can see the next one here. The next one is the outline of the presentation. So I do think that maybe a little bit your main point could become more clear. This is not bad, but here's new product I understand but I'm a little bit confused are you making shoes you see what I mean the key point you're saying is these combine for some health benefit right but you don't have that here right so at the beginning of your presentation your main point would be much more about staying fit exercise because who would buy this people who would buy this would be people who like exercise people who like to uh, monitor their exercise, right? Not people who just like this or just like this. Or people are like, what? Well, are you making Nike shoes now? Or is Nike making this? Or is this Nike's product? I'm not too clear, right? So your main point should be much more about the health benefit or the tracking, uh, tracking exercise, something like that, you see? Okay, let me go on then and show you the last one. The last one we have here is going to be Amazon, right? Okay, now if we look at Amazon's here, the first, whoops, wrong one. Get that down here. Okay, the first slide is the logo. Did you have a, a special reason why the very first slide is your logo? one that will be presented for the presentation is something about Amazon. It's a little bit vague, mm -hmm. right? It's a little bit vague. So uh, I would suggest the first one. You do have a lot more slides. You, got a lot, you go through quite a number of slides. Mm -hmm. But I would suggest the first one kind of make your point right up front would be better. It's, it doesn't really tell us anything about that. And Amazon is so huge. Now what I see what you've done. What you did in your slides is also what you did in your presentation. You kind of began with a wider idea and you focused down. Uh, Amazon is this, and then did you know, did you know, did you know that you can, that you can, then you narrowed down, you focused down. That's a good outline, but I think I would have really liked right up here, for example, let me give you an example. What if you had a person and that person somehow you could tell us he published his fan fiction and he's happy. Or somebody bought his fan fiction and he's happy. Right here you tell us, right up front. Right? So that's what the main point is. And I know it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound right because we watch so many presentations where people don't make their main point up front. Lots of presentations people have no main point. <laughs> that's totally normal. But it's not the best way for us. For us, the best thing is right here, right now, tell us, right? And the reason is, this is interesting. I love fan fiction. I'm a big fan of fan fiction. But if I was not listening carefully, I would have said, oh, it's just Amazon something, right? Now we get down from, these are popular books. These are popular books. Would you like to be involved? Would you like to be involved? Would you like to be involved? Yes, I'd like to be involved. In fact, I think this picture could have gone up front. Maybe this picture with uh, Harry Potter and then saying, you can make money with fan fiction. Right on the first slide. Something like this maybe even together on the first slide. So you have all the parts, but they're not pushed all up front. And here we introduce this. Now think about it. Think if the first slide was, you can make money with fan fiction. Or you can read fan fiction from fans and it's legal. And then the second slide is, now let me tell you how. You see? Right? So getting the main point up front is not at all uh, an easy thing. It's actually quite a difficult thing. It's hard to focus. Right? So for Netflix, I think this time Netflix did quite a good job right up front. In fact, I would have put the phone in the hand on the first slide. 
Right there, main point. Today, this is my point. This is my main point. And then first sentence, right? For Apple, I would have put the somebody who's, yeah. Do you track your health? Do you care about your health? Apple and Nike are working together to help you track your health. Because the product is not the sensor. The product is not the shoes. The product is not the Apple device. The product is not the app. The product is tracking your health. Which is the thing we learn in marketing all the time, right? The product is not the product, but the thing. Netflix, the product is the convenience that you can have it in your hand everywhere you go. For Amazon, the product is I get to not only publish, but read fan fiction legally. I think that's a good point. And for Sans, the product is, what is the product? They just show. <laughs> yeah, but what's the consumer's thing they get? Killing time. <laughs> 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 it's so <laughs> negative. That sounds so <laughs> negative. <laughs> <laughs> Wasting your time. <laughs> Come to Sans to waste your time. No, obviously, you, you did cover it in your presentation. You said it in your presentation. You said you can find the, the, the clues. You can check the, the blood. You can check the different things. And you can solve the, the mystery, right? And you can have fun doing it. So that was the main thing. Maybe right up front, you would say, do you want to solve a crime? Right? Do you want to solve a mystery? Come to Sands, and you can solve a mystery, right? Okay, so that's good so far. We're going to do the next chapter next, but we'll take a short break first, and you guys got to go. And I'll record about your presentation, and I'll email you, and I'll put it online so you can watch my feedback. Okay? <laughs>